Uh, I'm, I'm here to talk a little bit today about some work I've been doing with CoreLogic, and this to me is, is pretty exciting. Um, so what, what kind of inspired this um, in my mind was uh, several several years ago I heard uh, Joe Armstrong, the creator of Erlang, talk about how some of the earlier versions of Erlang were developed in Prolog, which is a logic programming language. And um, ever since then I've been thinking, how would I go about writing a, let's, let's say, a, a assembler, a bytecode assembler for Python, let's say, in, in something like uh, uh, core logic, um, or in just in a logic programming language in general. Um, so that's kind of what, what uh, started this. I've written some bytecode assemblers uh, for uh, ClojurePy. Uh, I'm the author of ClojurePy, and um, and uh, I've worked with several uh, bytecode assemblers there. So this is kind of um, me thinking about this in a different way. All right, so first of all, um, we're going to have the, the idea here is that a lot of what you're going to see here has an input and an output. Now, Basically, we're going to try to define sets of functions that take an input map of various bits of data and then put shoves the output into an output map. Now, each function here, like this max stack o, doesn't actually work on all the parts of the map. It only works on on a single uh, couple parts. So, for instance, here, um, a full map that we're dealing with right now has uh, four um, uh, attributes to the map. Um, we, we start with um, consts, which are a list of consts, uh, of constant um, uh, constant data. Uh, when you, when in, in Python, when you load data onto the stack, push data onto the stack, you don't push it just the data. You have to tell the interpreter, here's an index to go into this const um, array and load that const value in. Code is going to be a uh, list of um, bytes. Um, that define the actual bytecode. Stack is going to be, is, is kind of a tracker pointer. Um, after we get done completely um, interpreting a function, stack should be zero. Otherwise, we have an unbalanced stack and there's something wrong with the bytecode that we're working with. Max stack is the highest number ever hit as we interpret through the stack. So as you can see here, the problem writing this with a, a functional or imperative language would be that you have to kind of walk through the stack to find um, how the stack is going to be built up and torn down to be able to calculate this max stack value. But it's actually very simple to express it in a uh, language like CoreLogic. So what we have here is emit helpers. And what emit helpers are going to do is take each one of these items, um, max stack, stack code, and, and emit a, um, a relation for each one that will allow us to manipulate, um, to pull out that one value out of the map. So for instance here, we say, um, when I grab max stack, all I really want to do is bind max stack from the input to imax. So here in max stacko, this calculates the um, if if we have found a higher point in the stack at this current uh, location. So what count says is that we're about ready to push one or more items onto the stack. Now see if that manipulates the max stack value in any way. So we get the, um, the imax value and the um, the uh, let's see here i stack and then the o max is the output max and what we basically say is the new stack value is i stack plus the count um, so this will be the the new level of the stack after we exit whatever is currently being executed here and then we do a con d here that basically says if the um, new stack value is higher than the max then we're going to set the output max to the new value simple really simple stuff so if we want to go and execute that we can we can see here that in fact it does work we pass in an empty environment and then our output is three because the old environments the, the uh, stack start off as zero as we see up here an empty environment and then the output of the um, of the max stack is three uh, because the uh, we, we've added three elements to it now push -oh. Here basically to, we, we pull the two stack values out. Um, part of pushing automatically calculates the new max stack value. And then we certainly say the new stack value is the old stack value plus the count of the new, what we've, what we've added in. So we can see that in fact works. The new stack value here from an empty environment, if we push three items, the new stack value is going to be three and the max stack is going to be three. Excellent. So now, now comes to some things with consts, and it's going to be a little easier to go down here, for instance, and look at what we have. So if we push, if we say a given operation defines a new const value, then what we're going to get is a, if you see here at the bottom, um, right here, the new const is going to have foo in it, because we said we're adding foo from the const here. Index is an output variable, uh, which is basically, which is this variable here, which is the index of the const after we've placed it into the array. So 
obviously foo here is zero, um, and then we haven't modified any of the other variables, so everything else could just be anything. And we can see, um, so, so that works just fine. Um, if you go to my uh, other blog article, I talk a little bit about this, but uh, split 16 is a function that given a integer, will split it into the high and low bytes. And this is needed in Python because um, certain things like cons, when you say push cons to give it an index, that's a 16-bit integer. Um, most op, uh, byte codes in Python are single byte, and their arguments are often double byte, and uh, yeah, 16 bit. And then um, append 16, I don't actually know that we use that, so I won't go over that here. Um, so now, now let's, we can define some more attributes, and this is kind of the cool thing. Is, as you see here, we're building up these attributes to say, you know, what, let's describe what a bytecode does. So for instance here, one argop says that this is an operation that is a, um, and this is the um, code for the op, the, the one byte code, and this is the 16-bit argument, and it says it's a operation that has one argument. And what we're going to do is say, okay, because this op is a single byte, we're going to define it, uh, constrict it to an interval of 0 to 255. And then we're going to say, we're going to plot our, co our input code and our output code from the two environments. We're going to split the argument into a low and a high. And then what we're going to do is we're going to append, so we have the input code, and then the output code is going to be the input code with the addition of op high low. Right? So we've added three more bytes onto it. Similar, similarly, we have uh, zero arg op, which is exactly the same, but we just have the single op and, instead of the high low. So now we have some um, helper uh, constants here. We have load const and binary add. And in Python, load const will um, bring a const and push onto the stack, and then we'll do a we could do a binary add that'll take the two constants and and add them together, right? So now we can do load const o. And what this basically defines, it says we have an input and an out and an op and an output. So here's going to be our definition of in our AST, we're going to have a map that has op and load const. And then the arg here is going to define the, the actual constant variable. It could be a string or an int or, or any number of things. So then what we're going to say is that here we, we've defined our different attributes for these bytecodes. So now we can just start saying what is a load const operation. A load const operation has load const here in the op, and it pushes one item onto the stack, it defines a const, and we hand it the const, and we get the index out, and then we say this is a one arg op, that it, the operation is load const, the index is what we grab from load const though, and the output is goes to the output. So, so see what, what's really cool here is that with three lines of code, we've completely defined what this bytecode does. And that's amazing. In other systems I've written, this amount of code was 10, 12 lines, and then you had to understand the flow of execution of the code at the same time. So this is another one, uh, no const change. Oh, this basically says that from this, this given operation does not change the const uh, mappings at all. So binary addo is doesn't have any arguments at all. It just pops two items off the stack. So what we can say is that it's a zero arg operation. There's no const to the change, and it doesn't push anything at all. In fact, it, it pops uh, two things off the stack. So let's let's go and um, let's go and give it a try here. So uh, what we have here is a conde, and it says given a, an op, it'll dispatch to one of these based upon our um, operation. And if we run that, we see sure enough. 42, 0, 0, 42 being the load uh, const um, number 0, 0, because um, we've loaded, we're saying to load um, const number 0 onto the stack. Our stack is now 1, and our max stack is 1. Excellent. So now this um, function is where we would add in every single bytecode that we've defined in one long con D. And basically, the, each um, one of these unifications here would uh, dispatch, uh, would, would determine which, which uh, bytecode we dispatch off to. So now, now a lot of times we'll have a series of bytecodes, let's say in a do block. And so that's what this defines here, is that we have a block which is going to be a sequence of operations. And we basically say, if, if the current block is empty, then the input equals the output. That's kind of the termination. We've reached the end. Right. Otherwise, what we're going to have is temp output, cur, and rest. And conzo, so this, this is going to pull the first item off and then give us a rest. So this is like a first rest and our original block, which is up here. Now we're going to dispatch. Um, so, so if we have one more item, then we're going to call dispatch, which is going to 
um, put um, uh, basically encode this op into our temporary output. And then we're going to recurse into Blocko and call ourselves again and say here's our temp output that we got after we encoded our current uh, current uh, bytecode. The rest um, is the rest of the blocks that we, uh, we got from up here in Konzo, and then the output is going to be bound up here to Blocko. So does this work? It does. So if we look here, this should be be 42, 0, 42, 1, and 43. And in fact, we see 42, 0, 42, 1, and 43. And as we see here, we have two bytes because they're 16 bit arcs. Our cons are x and y. Our stack is 0 because add popped uh, two items off. And the max stack is 2. Now, if this was actually a full blown Python um, uh, encoder, we would actually, uh, binary add would pop one more item on, so we'd still have a, a stack of one. Uh, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. Now, of course, this is a discussion about core logic and logic programming. So we have to do the thing that everybody says to do, and that is run our code backwards, right? So if we were to take what we ran here and copy it, into the output and say, when we're done, we want to have an empty environment. What are the opcodes that we have? Boom. And this is where I get chills because we have actually just now created both an encoder and a decoder for a Python like bytecode system. That's the power of logic programming. And this stuff has me so excited. Thank you for watching.